it's something I love to do and it's just a little hobby on the side, but it's definitely helped increase my confidence about the skills that I've learned in your course, but it's helped me to feel like I've got a little bit more of a sort of safety net when it comes to savings and disposable income. You're listening to the She Renovates podcast. You're listening to She Renovates, the podcast for women who want to renovate to create an income and a life they love. Hello, hello everyone. It's Bernadette back with another episode. And today I have the lovely Jenna. Now, Stephen and James and I were in Bondi recently and we ran into Jenna at a a cafe and she was out inspecting property and I thought she was inspecting to buy for herself, but it turned out it was a side gig and it just blew me away because it really demonstrates the value of a growth mindset. And so that's really why I've asked Jenna to come on to the program today. So Jenna is a graduate of the School of Renovating. She's a 33-year-old social media manager who is passionate about using property and renovating as a stepping stone toward her dream of living on the beach in North Bondi and in brackets one day owning a wine shop. So you'll definitely be my best friend when you own a wine shop, Jenna. (laughs) Good to know. (laughs) She sold her first project, a two-bedroom apartment in Bondi last year, since renovated a larger two-bedroom apartment that she calls home in the same area. When it comes to styling, she loves Scandinavian decor, Slim Aaron's photography, cacti and minimalist design. Her next goal is to sell for a good profit in a few years' time and move a little closer to the beach. Well, welcome, Jenna. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Bernadette. Yeah, I'm very grateful for you to come on because the what I really want to focus on today is around the mindset when you are looking to, you know, improve your situation with renovating. And something that I think is a shame is that young people, particularly in Sydney, think that they can never get into the property market and are going to be renters forever and so um and it and it does take a change in mindset in order to be able to make that leap now when i met you in bondi that day tell tell me what you were doing (laughs) um yeah so it was lovely to see you and uh james at the cafe that's my local cafe so I'm there every day and yeah it was very fortuitous and I was I just mentioned I was on on the way to inspect a property for someone else and basically the background to that is I was um like a lot of people um I was sitting around at home panicking about the increase in interest rates and worrying about you know how I'm, how am I going to pay my mortgage I live on my own I'm paying my mortgage on my own and so everything falls on me and I was panicking about how I was going to do that and I was reading the barefoot investor as well to try and get my finances in order and one of the things he said is and, and that you say in your renovating course as well is to make a list of all your skills and the things that you can do if you need a bit of money or that you could be doing on the side to kind of increase that um, cash flow a little bit And so I made a list and, you know, I've got a journalism degree, so I'm like, I can write, I'm great at selling clothes on Marketplace, that's another side hustle I'm really passionate about. Um, And I didn't think to write down I can inspect properties, but I wrote down Airtasker. And so, yeah, I was thinking maybe I can edit people's resumes or write things for them on Airtasker. So um, Airtasker, for anyone that doesn't know, is an app where people put jobs that they want doing in their local area and you can... Uh, compete against other people to to get those jobs. So basically I sat down and went on Airtasker and one of the first things that I saw that came up was a guy who was after somebody uh, to go to a property inspection in Potts Point and that's just around the corner from me. I wasn't doing anything that day and I just thought that's something I can do. Um, So he was paying $50 to go to the inspection and send him a video So long story short, I did that and then that turned into the same guy wanting about 10 inspections and he was a 
really lovely guy and we um we actually caught up for drinks after that when he moved from Melbourne to Sydney and uh, you know a friendly in real life so um it was just a great experience and it was a great way to meet new people see places learn more about areas that you know I I know but not kind of um deeply so that turned into him saying to me oh you should do this um you know professionally <laughs> and I already have a full-time job but um, that just led to a great review from him and more Airtasker jobs and then from there um, it's gone on to advertising the service on Facebook and getting people in the local area. Bondi is notoriously hard when it comes to rental inspections so uh, a lot of the time you know they're all, all on at the same time and they're hard to get to so I think I've been to about 50 properties now <laughs> within and that's only in the last couple of months. So um, I'm definitely, you know, starting to recognise the real estate agents and recognise the buildings and, and know the local area a lot more. So it's something I love to do and it's just a little hobby on the side, but, um, you know, something on weekends and things like that. But it's definitely helped increase my confidence about the skills that I've learned, you know, in your course, but also feel a little bit more, I don't have all the answers about, you know, financial <laughs> security and things like that, but it's helped me to feel like I've got a little bit more of a, a sort of safety net when it comes to savings and disposable income. Mm -hmm. And also because you are renovating in Bondi, that information that you gather as you go around is invaluable um, because one of the things that you've got to know when you're buying and selling property is really what people will pay for. So I would imagine you're getting a really good sort of insight into, you know, what's what people, you know, I know you're still you're working with the rental market, but I'm sure that that's a really solid foundation. Yeah, it's helped me to realise what it is that people kind of wow over when they go to inspections and even listening to what other people are saying about, oh, that kitchen's ugly or I like that bathroom or I like this and don't like that. I've been kind of keeping mental notes of that for next time that I renovate. And, you know, basically at the end of the day, the thing that everyone wants is a clean, reasonably modern kitchen and bathroom. And that's, you know, another thing that that you always um, say in your courses too. So it's very interesting. And also another thing that I'm really passionate about when I look at places, which it's interesting how many people go in and they don't look at the ceilings of, uh, it's mostly apartments. They don't look at the ceilings. And that's something, you know, I've learned as well that, you know, you want to be seeing any mould problems, you want to be looking for issues like that. It might be really pretty, but if you've got a big mould patch on, the, you know, on the yeah. roof, it's, it's not somewhere that you want to be going. And also natural light, I always say to everyone, it needs to have good natural light, otherwise you're just going to be depressed. But the thing that I'm probably most passionate about, and that's the thing that I love about living in Bondi, is like the concept of the third space. So You've got your home, you've got your work, but the third space is kind of community spaces like parklands or, um, you know, the beach, cafes, coffee shops, that sort of stuff, bars, pubs. Um, so what's within a, you know, 15-minute walk radius of that place and are you going to be isolated in your home if you live there or are you going to have the whole world, you know, within walking distance and you know, you don't spend your whole life in your apartment. You want to be part of the community outside that too. Absolutely. So that the third space, that's an interesting, I've, I've heard of that in terms of a workspace. Like I know some of the work, what do you call them, when you go out and find we an office work. out? Yeah, that type of thing. They refer to themselves as the third space. But I never really thought about, the, you know, the recreational areas around your home. And I think that that's a really good way to describe it. Yeah, well, Starbucks actually, um, I don't think they invented it, but Starbucks, that was their whole ethos um, that they wanted to become the third space, that you'd have homework and then Starbucks for meeting people and socialising and, you know, the third meeting space. So yeah. um, I know they haven't really taken off in Australia, but I think that, you know, independent coffee shops and parks and stuff like that are, are that for us. 
Well, I know we sort of have a hurt. Well, we do, but we should be ashamed to admit it. At Bar Cleveland, they've got this whopping great big table, family table, and so we it should have our name on it because when we <laughs> have family home, we always go there for a meal and it's it feels like our home away from home. So yeah. Yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah. And so I was telling Jenna earlier, I went last night to a book launch. Um, my friend Molly Benjamin, who's the um, founder of the Ladies Finance Club, has just launched a book called Girls Want to Have Funds. And she is, talks a lot about the, you know, about how women in particular um, really the majority don't take money seriously, don't like to talk about money like it's poo-pooed. And, you know, that whole scenario about young women in particular, you know, spending all their money on going out in clothes. And so um, I really think that it's a good thing. Um, like I think what you're doing really is you're a poster girl for a young woman who's got really got her head screwed on money wise and i know you don't think that you you've got your money sorted but seriously if you were to compare yourself to the majority of your age group you would probably be surprised another thing i was saying to jenna sorry if i'm jumping around a bit but i'm just trying to get my thoughts um the other thing i was saying to you is i've got a a tiktok account and i was talking about um i visited an avo smash um, project. Uh, our friend Kathleen Friedrich has done a beautiful Art Deco apartment with her daughter and for her daughter in Darlinghurst. And I got so much flack because then I was talking about that strategy and I got so much flack about the fact that it's unethical to help your kids to get a start in property, that everyone should be equal and all this sort of thing. And it's just so obvious that that um, money mindset is a big issue and particularly, well, I guess in across all generations. And so I think it's great to present some, some examples of young women who are treading a different path. And the fact that you're willing to go out and stand in queues and look at properties when for renters who may not own a property, I think really speaks volumes. And so thank you for being willing to share that. Now, let's get on to your property journey. Now, I know that your start, so not that long ago, you were a first home buyer, a couple of years ago. Is that correct? Yeah, five years ago now. Yeah. So do you, would you mind talking about that, how you got into your first property? Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, it's a long story, but if we fast track it, basically, um, I've lived in Bondi for 10 years. Um, it's the only place outside of, you know, where I grew up, which is Wollongong, that I've ever lived. <laughs> I love living here. Um, but I started off renting here. I rented here for five years uh, with partner. Um, and we lived together for five years. And I came home one day and I had a text message from him saying that, He's decided to go back home to the UK and he was getting on a flight in a couple of weeks' time and I wasn't invited. <laughs> so that was pretty brutal and definitely, I'm laughing about it now, but, um, yeah. you know, it was pretty, pretty horrendous and all of a sudden my sort of... Uh, home security just fell from under my feet because we were sharing the rent in a you know expensive apartment together and suddenly it was just going to be me or I had to leave my home and find somewhere else um I had thought that we would have bought a place together and all of that wasn't happening anymore I was yeah on my yeah. bottom basically <laughs> um so I Long story short, I kind of decided that I wasn't going to let him dictate the future, you know, of my life and I wasn't going to leave, you know, the place and the community and the friends and everything that, you know, are very much home for me. So um, decided that, you know, I had to make it happen on my own. And so I started going to property inspections and decided that I had to kind of rethink the idea of perhaps getting a bigger place with, with him um and instead look for whatever I could get a smaller place in the area um on my own so 
started looking um, and actually I looked through for loads of places and always kind of I was quite surprised by how cutthroat and how fast paced the Sydney property market is. I felt like I was getting eaten alive. And then like, <laughs> I'm not a woo woo person, but I really think that this was kind of meant to be. I was out the front of the place that I ended up buying and there was a buyer's agent, um, Amanda Gould, who I know you know as yeah. well. Um, yeah. You know, this fabulous, amazing woman who was there and, you know, saying, on the phone and saying to the real estate agent, why are you here? Why aren't you here? You're meant to be showing us this property. And the real estate agent didn't turn up. Anyway, I got chatting to Amanda and said, oh, you know, are you a real estate agent or what do you do? And she said she was a buyer's agent. And I said, what's a buyer's agent? Because <laughs> I'd never heard of one before. And then, um, you know, I, she told me and then throughout the day, we saw each other at multiple properties, as you do, and we saw each other at the cafe between inspections and stuff like that. I ended up asking her for her card and we met the next week and I just decided that I needed all the help that I could get. And so um, enlisted the help of amazing Amanda and within a week of meeting out the front of that property in Bondi, I had bought it. <laughs> Um, so it was, it was meant to be. And Amanda's basically, um, I've worked with her twice now. I worked with her again to get the place that I'm sitting in now. Um, awesome. but she's become a, a real mentor for me as well. Um, as of you in terms of my, my property journey and, and kind of, you know, working out what's next for me. But, um, so I bought that place. It was a teeny tiny little shoe box. Um, and I think to go back to your point before, I think that that's something that I've noticed as well. Like a lot of people, a lot of people seem to want a turnkey or a, mm, a yeah. house with a backyard and they want to be close to the city. They kind of want it all. And the only realistic way that you're going to get there is to start small and gradually build bigger. Um, and that's what I'm trying to do. Like, as you said at the start, my goal, I know exactly the apartment complex I want to live in on um, Ramsgate Avenue in North Bondi. <laughs> and I can see, I remember we had to like say our, our goals when we started the course with you and I can see, uh, sometimes I go down there and practice in my head, you know, walking down from my place to get a coffee and sit on the beach and, you know, go to the bar across the road and that's where I want to be. I want to be on North Bondi Beach. So my what I did is I bought this little shoe box and renovated it completely. Um, you know, everything was brand new there by the time I was finished. Um, that was a big learning curve and I quickly found out, you know, who I would use again for my next project and who I wouldn't. And, yeah, I made, I bought that place for 770 five years ago um, and spent probably about 80 to 90,000 renovating it um, and sold it for 1.11 um, last year. Beautiful. So Beautiful. Then from there I used Amanda again. <laughs> I wanted to upgrade and, and sell that place and, and buy a bigger place with a balcony and, you know, some undercover car parking, which is very lucrative in Bondi <laughs> and it's an essential um, and so I used Amanda again and found another place on the same street <laughs> um, and so I moved in there completely renovated it top to toe with the same most of the same team that I used the first time around except for the duds um, and now I bought that for 1.25 um, last year and uh, it's just been valued at around 1.6. That's awesome. Thank so you. you've basically taken yourself from a property 770 to now you're in a property that, that's valued at around 1.6. Yes, that's right. Such is the power of renovating. Yeah, and it's been a great learning experience for me as well and helped me really build up the confidence. And I think to kind of go back to how it all started, like it's – you know, property ownership's not all sunshine and roses, like especially on your own, it's it's hard to pay the mortgage and do all that stuff. But one thing I know is that no one can, like I've got a, a safe, secure, nice home now and it's mine and 
if anything happens with my job or things like that, I can rent it out and always kind of have it as something to fall back on. Um, and it's definitely kind of not dependent on somebody else or, you know, dependent on not getting a text message <laughs> anymore that's going to kind of stuff everything up. So, um, yeah, I just want other people to know that I, I guess when I first started and when all of that drama, you know, happened to me, I, you know, I think everyone feels like it's the end of the world and you're never going to recover from it and you're never going to be able to kind of get back on your feet. But I guess it's not all been perfect, but this is really kind of proof that you will be okay and you can you, you can build yourself up and it's always, you know, imperative to have that foundation and financial rock that you can fall back on and that only you are in control of. Absolutely. And I heard it said one day, and I think this really applies to property ownership and anything that you do with property, that 30% of your time doing that is absolutely amazing and you're, you know, you're sky high and, you know, it's a, it's fantastic. 30% of your time, it's really good. And 30% of your time is absolutely crap. Yeah. And so it's really learning to, um, to roll with those bad times. And like you are at the moment, like the, the interest rates are going up and, and so on. And so you're finding a solution to that and so that you are able to move that from crap into the good part at least. And from what it sounds like, it's even maybe better than good. And, yeah, it's like anything in life, isn't it? It's just you, you take the bad with the good, but it's really how you, how you react to the things that don't go how you want them to that, that really you know, determines your future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And do you find, like, do you talk much to the people, your sort of contemporaries, about what you do in property? Yeah. So um, I, all of my friends are really, none of them are kind of doing the same thing as what I am, but they're all very supportive of it. But, yeah, I definitely talk to my friends around, you were saying before about finances, like, I'm lucky to have a few friends that live, uh, sorry, that work in the same industry as me. And we often talk about, you know, how much you're getting paid and did you get a pay rise and, and what's the average salary for this? Like we're quite transparent around, you know, how much we all get paid and stuff like that. And I think that that's really important for women because it's something that a lot of people don't talk about. But yeah, I do have other friends who they're not renovating, but they are property owners as well. And, um, you know, doing it on their own. And we, we talk all the time about, you know, how are you going to deal with the next mortgage, mortgage increase and, um, you know, how are you going to prioritise what you want to do around your home and, and things like that. So it, it's good to have that support network. And I've found that, you know, She Renovates was a, a great um, program to be a part of because I did get to meet other people that have similar goals to me and that are renovating properties yeah. so Ali was somebody who was selling her place at the same time that I was selling my first place and we got in touch via, via the group and ended up messaging on Facebook and saying oh what's happening and I'm so stressed and um, it was really great to have that support because I don't know that many people in my life who have if they do own places they haven't sold them um, yeah yeah. Yeah. And um, like I know, um, by the way, Ali's just about to take her third to market. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I have a lot of women that say, look, that have been passionate about property all their life, mm. but won't talk about it to their friends because they mm. know that they don't get it. And I think it's, it's such a shame because there is so much to learn from someone who is committed to their goals and, you know, whether it's renovating what it is, when you see someone that's actually um, making, setting goals and actually doing what it takes and achieving them, that is so inspiring. And to not be sharing that story I think is a shame and I think it's a lot of reason why women in particular don't do that well financially because there's not that open conversation about what you're doing financially. Absolutely. And I think that it's something that you need to be transparent with your friends about, about how much of a big deal it is to you and how important it is to you. And maybe kind of, you know, surround yourself with people that do respect how important it is. Like I know for myself, I'm, I'm lucky to have 
you know, a lot of really strong friendships. But, you know, as a culture, especially for women, I feel like the events that we celebrate collectively are baby showers, hens parties, weddings, engagements. They're the highlights. But why don't we celebrate, you know, career pr promotions, financial goals, property sales, other Absolutely. things? Yeah. As much as we do, as much as we do the things that are connected to somebody else. Um, so, I mean, I make a big effort in my friendships of really making a big deal when my friends hit goals outside of those kind of traditional st touchstones. Because I think, if anything, they're more significant because you've done it on your own. And yeah. um, I'm lucky to have, you know, some friends don't get it, but most of them, you know was so excited for me when I sold my place and, and really proud of me. And, you know, I think that that's the way to be. Amazing. And just one last question. How have you found getting trades post COVID? Yeah, I guess um, just to go back to add some more context to my story, I guess I'm maybe a little bit different from some other renovators in the program because I live in my places, so um, I just do one at a time, live in it for a few years and then sell it and move on to somewhere a little bit bigger. So my goal is not necessarily to flip well, to flip at all. It's to live in my place and then in a few years' time sell it and move closer to the beach, a step, a little step closer to that North Bondi location each time. So I did... I moved into this place between COVID lockdowns. And as you know, in the eastern suburbs, this was like the epicentre of COVID lockdowns. <laughs> um, so it wasn't an, an ideal time. It, meaned, it meant that all my plans had to be both knocked back and also fast-tracked. So I decided to go with the one group of trades to do everything. So the guy that did my kitchen at my last place did absolutely everything this time and they project managed the whole job. Um, everything, every finish, every tile, every colour was chosen by me online because I couldn't physically go to the store and touch anything or see anything. So it's just, it's amazing actually that it's all come together because it was just all done remotely all the consultations were done remotely. It was a bit of a nightmare, really. Um, but I think going with, it was a nightmare in terms of not being able to see things and, and touch things and the tactile side of things. But I, working with, I got a couple of other quotes from different people, but working with, with the team that I did, and um, I'm happy to share their, their details. Yeah. If anyone, do you want me to say now? Or, yeah. Well, um, if anyone's interested in knowing those details, just drop it in the comments yeah. below um, and uh, we'll come back and, and check through them and, yeah, make sure you get the information. So basically yeah. I, I trusted them because I'd worked with them before. I'd seen their work. A big learning from the first time for me was to go to the showrooms of all the places because the cheaper quotes that I got when I got went to the showroom, I just saw some of their work and thought, this is, you get what you pay for basically. And this company was, um, you know, more expensive but had attention to detail. They had my trust. They had great work. Everyone commented in my first place how beautiful the kitchen was. So I was like, okay, if you've done a kitchen like that, you can do a bathroom like that and everything else. So I trusted him and his team completely. I wasn't here for most of it. I had to go live with my parents in Wollongong, which is about two hours drive away because, you know, I didn't have anywhere else to go. Um, so I just gave him the keys and, you know, came up every weekend to, to check things out personally. But other than that, completely trusted him and it all turned out beautifully. But, um, yeah, a lot of people are scared to engage tradies and to, um, you know, do things themselves. So they're looking to buy the turnkeys, but that's not that's not how you get ahead. You might have a comfortable place, but it's not going to get you to your next goal. Exactly, yeah. Actually, Debbie um, Levy has asked for those details. Thanks. Oh, great. Jenna. Yeah. So do you mind just dropping them in the comments later? Is that yeah, all right? No. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. I'll, I'll put them in the comments. I can't recommend them highly okay. enough. <laughs> Beautiful. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming and telling your story. Um, 
I'm, yeah, it's it's really great to see you doing so well and you deserve to do well. So thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all your support, Bernadette. You are very welcome, Jenna. This is the She Renovates podcast. To discover how to harness the power of renovating, check out theschoolofrenovating.com.